Welcome back to the channel, guys. You know, I lurk on a lot of Facebook groups, and it's caused me to have a thought for a video here. And maybe you guys can hear me out and share down in the comments what you think. So I see a lot of people that are in the um, kind of like the the pressure wash 101 forum. That's one of the ones that I'm on. You know, I see a lot of people that they pose a question. You know, they'll they'll post a, an ad for a machine that they're seeing at a big box store, like a Home Depot or something like that, for you know, seven or eight hundred bucks, and they're getting a 2.5 GPM machine, and um, they're wondering if they can if they can do it with with that. Um, the way too simple answer is, yeah, of course you can do it. You know, probably with uh, an electric pressure washer, but would you want to? The thing that I start thinking about is, why would I spend eight hundred dollars on a machine like that, only planning on uh, replacing it as quickly as possible? And I'll tell you why. Because really, um, I think you're wasting your time with something like that. Trying to wash a house and doing concrete with a little machine are two completely different animals. Um, you know, the little machine is going to be good, I think, if you're primarily like a concrete guy, if you're doing sealer and everything like that. Sure, you're going to get away with a 2.5 GPM machine and you're going to have fun doing it, right? Just get like a little gas-powered machine and go to town, right? But for the house washing stuff, you know, it's all about the the volume you can put out. It's all about your ability to rinse. Um, the more volume you can put out, it makes an actual tangible difference in how long it takes for you to do a house wash. I get it. Leon Johns is out there. Yeah, he's the king, by the way, of the, uh, what is it, the AR-45 that they're using? That guy, if you want to learn how to wash and wash quickly, that guy is the king, right? But... The problem that I have with that setup is that it's just, it's too beautiful for its own good. You know, you really do require a, a trailer for that. And I just don't want to have to deal with the trailer unless I get hot water, right? So um, my idea is uh, for residential house washing, you know, you're going to be the, probably the most efficient at a five and a half GPM machine. Um, I started out with a machine that I bought, I think I spent $1,700 on it. And it came with, uh, you know, J-Rods. It was a couple of things, the length of hose and stuff. It was a few things to get me started. I didn't get one of those kits that had, like, the extension pole or anything like that. Don't, don't, don't get that about me. Anyways, I spent 1700 bucks on it. And it was a Honda engine. It was a pull start. Uh, it came with a General Pump TS-2021. And that is my original bypass right there and I know that it's like waiting to screw me over so I want to replace that with a K7 as quickly as possible by the way but my first machine lasted me um two years actually one whole year and early yeah yeah sorry that I was right the first time it did last me two years I thought I was getting a quality machine with it being a Honda and everything like that and I do my old changes, I keep up on my maintenance, and it still burned a piston somehow. I don't even know how it happened. So um, I took that thing apart, and um, you know the, f the first thing about the engine that I bought for $1,700, I won't say the name. I know, I think it was just built on a Friday. You know, fair play, right? I'm not gonna hold it against them. It's just, it's just how things worked out. Um, you know, the belt, the wheels, they weren't mounted perfectly lined up so the belts were kind of misaligned and I didn't know it until I took the thing apart that's why it was constantly going through belts I had the worst taste in my mouth for a belt drive after owning that machine I mean I have pictures of like my hand bloody because I cut myself on the case trying to replace the the belt on a job so anyways when the engine died on me early last year I went to um, immediately over to Harbor Freight and I bought the Predator 420 and it was an electric start. Researching it, I thought that it was a good idea because they're actually pretty solid little engines. Um, I, I just, I needed an engine and I needed it then. So I got it and I had already taken apart the belt drive. I wanted to get away from the belt drive life and I wanted to get over to the gear reduction life. Boys, I'm telling you, gear reduction life is is like um it's just as good as as mr t life right there i'm telling you if 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 um if you get away from a belt drive this this um okay well don't misunderstand me 
I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the belt drive. I'm just saying for my reasons, I had a really bad experience with it. And I kind of wanted to just, you know, get away from it. And I wanted to make my truck installation as absolutely compact as possible. So the nice thing is, is just, uh, you know, it enabled me to bolt everything down. Um, and you do technically actually save a little bit of uh, lost power compared to the belt drive. Apparently there's some sort of a slip factor in there when it comes to horsepower loss. But I think the biggest thing that I noticed is the difference between the Honda engine and the Predator 420 is that the Honda, the GX, what is it, the 390 that I had, um, it only makes 11.7 peak horsepower, right? So I thought it was a 13 horsepower engine the entire time, but it's not. So the Predator 420 apparently is a true 13 horsepower engine. So with that little bit of pickup, this does have a little bit more juice to it than my old Honda powered rig. So what you're looking at here is the only thing that exists on my rig from my original machine is my pump and my bypass. Everything else has been replaced on this rig, including the mounting plate. This is what I would tell you to go to right off the bat. If I had it to do over again and I had somebody helping me to not reinvent the wheel when it comes to residential house washing and being efficient about it, I would have put to myself together a list and said, look, this thing bolts together. It's really simple to, to, to build. Just don't pinch an O-ring, you know, don't strip any threads and you'll be good to go. This is such a luxury having the electric start. Uh, the Predator 420, if I recall, it only ran me $400. You know, what a fantastic deal. So the nice thing about this is that you're looking at, okay, let's just play this game real quick. You want to spend 800 bucks on a machine that you're just going to turn around and you know that you're going to replace like as quickly as possible. That's not happening, to be honest. Or do you want to just like spend maybe a little bit extra and get a machine that's actually going to do it for you? You know, this machine, we're talking... 400 for the engine. I think it was 230 for the gear reduction and then you can get a pump Right, you can get a pump for $600 Right a bypass a K7 is gonna run you like 125 bones and then you know Just whatever little platform you might have sitting around and I have not obviously Done my research is to see like what prices are doing right now. These prices uh, were good as like, you know early last year, right? but my point is then you know you're looking at a setup here that is gonna really do a good job for you and you spent maybe 12 or 1300 bucks and you've got an electric start bro dr downstream won't do you wrong i'm just saying what it, if you if you have an idea or a thought about this uh down below please leave a comment one thing that i was thinking about doing though is when it comes time to replacing this pump i'm actually going to get one of those comet eight gallon per minute 2000 psi pumps that are designed to work off of 13 horsepower engines um, the gear reduction drive that i have will fit it so i won't have to replace anything uh, but that's possibly on the menu for this year is is upgrading to an eight gallon a minute um, albeit 2000 psi but I would be able to put down eight gallons a minute. Now, I think that's going to be an advantage because it comes back to me uh, right back around to the amount of water that you're putting out. Trust me, it's just so much easier to rinse a house with a five gallon a minute machine versus a 2.5 gallon a minute machine, right? This thing is also going to kick the cement uh, right in the, in, in the uh, well, it's going, to, it's going to take care of cement. You know, what can I say? It, it runs a 20 inch surface cleaner just fine. You know, um, so far it's been pretty bulletproof. I just keep the uh, oil topped off. Um, the gear drive does like to leak a little bit of oil, but it's not like a problem. I just think there's just something kind of inherent about that design. So I just simply make sure that the oil is kept topped off on the, uh, on the gear reduction, um, and on the pump as well. Um, I'm going on four years on this pump right there, that general pump TS 2021. This is year four of using this pump right there. So I wonder how long I got, right? <laughs> Anyways, leave your comments down below. Um, I would say that this is a good idea for anyone if you're looking into getting it. 
you know, if you if you're looking to be a little bit more serious, maybe than than just you know going to a box store. If you are going to go into a box store, though, I would say the uh, Harbor Freight four gallon a minute machine is not too bad to start with. You know, at least get four gallons a minute. Um, I think those machines run like 900 or a thousand bucks, and this machine that you're looking at right here is like thirteen hundred dollars. So something to think about, but let me know what you guys think about it and I'll catch you later.